Welcome back to Great Lakes Makes and today I'm going to show you how to design and 3D print this organizer for nail sets. They've been rolling around in my toolbox and it's getting a little old. I'd like to have a place to keep them in one place. I like to start off everything with just a simple sketch of the dimensions that I'll need to take into Fusion 360. And in this case I need the barrel diameter it is 8.8 .8 millimeters. The hex is 10 millimeters and it's 30 millimeters long. So let's get started. To begin, we can create a sketch on any of our planes. Now I want this object to be generally trapezoid shaped. To start, I sketch out a trapezoid using the line tool. Make sure that all the top and bottom are horizontal and then I'll lock that down to the origin using the coincident constraint. Next, I'll make the sides be equal so that I have a symmetric trapezoid shape and assign an angle to the side at 75 degrees. Next, we'll come back and create the three circular cutouts that we'll use to hold the barrel of the nail set. And then I'll make all of the diameters equal. And then to make them symmetric, I'll make the center circle to be vertical over the origin. Next, we'll add a dimension to create the spacing between the circles. I'm using 15 millimeters. And then finally, we'll assign a diameter, in this case 8.8 .8 millimeters, based on what we measured on the nail sets. Now the shape's a little weird, so we'll assign an overall height at 8 millimeters to bring down the height of the overall organizer. And you can see it's kind of long and misshapen, so we'll come back and trim away the lines we don't need so that I have just the negative space of the barrel-shaped cutouts. And then we'll make the two legs on the side equal to the space between whole organizer is equally spaced and gives overall symmetric look. Exit your sketch and then use the extrude tool to extrude that shape out to 80 millimeters. Next, I create another sketch on the back side of the organizer. And this is going to be the hexagon shaped cutouts. I'm going to use the polygon tool, the circumscribed polygon. Use the same center as my barrel and then just stretch that hexagon shape out. Assign an overall height at 10 millimeters and then lock down one of the sides to be horizontal. When your sketch turns black, it's fully constrained. Then I'll use the rectangular pattern tool, select all the shapes that I want to extrude. I need three total shapes and I want them distributed over 30 millimeters so that I have 15 millimeters between each one. I'll exit that sketch and then again, I'll use the extrude tool and I've always selected the entire sketch. Fusion wants to select by different regions, but it's just old habits. And then I'll extrude that in to cut away 33 millimeters. You'll remember, remember we measured 30 millimeters of the length of the hexagon shape on the nail set. The last thing to model is to come back and create one more sketch on the back side. And this time we're just going to trace the perimeter with the line tool. And we'll use this to close off the hexagon. Exit the sketch, and again, use the extrude tool, selecting all of the regions. I've got my snap set at five millimeters, so I had to go back into the dialog box on the side and just enter a minus two. I don't want to cut it away, so change from cut to join. Click OK, and we're finished. The only thing that's left is to dress up all of the edges. The first thing I like to do is to fillet all of the corners. Use a nice big round five millimeter fillet to wrap those off. The next thing I always do is to add a small chamfer on the bottom side. I find that helps my prints uh, have a nice clean edge at the bottom without a, like a flange or you know, a thin layer. I use a one millimeter chamfer. Then I use a small fillet at the ends of each barrel. This is 0.8 millimeters just so it doesn't run into the hexagon shape and it rounds off those nicely. And then finally we can come back to all of the top edges and add that same 0.8 millimeter fillet. If you select something that's wrong, just uh, Deselect it, it's no problem, you don't have to start over. You can see I did that there. And that's finished in Fusion 360. The last thing to do is just select the body, and in the tree you can right click and save it off as an STL, and import it into the slicer software of your choice. I still use the old version of Kira 150406, I have no problems with it. My print time here is about an hour and 30 minutes. Thanks for watching.